Good morning, folks. Welcome back to another edition of Junkyard Hack. What we're going to do here is, uh, in this video, is talk about all the things we've done to the Biscayne so far and what we have yet to do to put her back on the road and use her as a uh, nice cruiser, uh, semi-daily driver, I guess you would say. So with that in mind, let's get started with this. Okay, as you can see, <clears throat> this is the engine compartment. The engine's all hooked up. Uh, the wires look a mess. We can straighten that out, no problem, but we got a uh, PVC system hooked up, PCV system hooked up. The fuel line is hooked up, and we have a hard line fuel line hooked up, and everything is uh, copacetic over on this side over here. Radiator fan also uh, addition. I got a spacer that put, let me put the fan a little closer to the radiator. I probably need to get a shroud for that. Um, I'm gonna uh, try to source a shroud. So that's one thing we got to do. I'm sure that uh, in the hotter temperatures, that's not gonna that's not gonna do it. It's gonna have to be closer, a lot closer, and a shroud would really help in the heating of this. So that's one of the things we're gonna do. Okay, uh, moving to the interior now. Okay, in the interior. We got a speedometer filled in where we'd had none yet before. We have turn signals that work. Uh, we do not have lights, headlights or, or brake lights. So that's gotta be done. Uh, and we have a shifter and we have patched the hole in the floor with a lot of random sheet metal that's pop riveted together. It looks like hell, but it works. Um, I might later put Bondo over that or some sort of fiberglass filler over that to smooth it out. But in the meantime, it matches the rest of the rattiness of this car. Now, as you see, we only have one seat. I got a matching seat for the other side. What I'm waiting to do is patch that rusty floor and maybe put some PR15 on it and clean it up a little bit. But uh, that's not right. It's really important right now. Um, need to get that uh, done, but it doesn't need to be done to get this thing back on the road. Um, uh, what we do need to do is the windshield. Uh, got a crack and some, uh, uh, what do you call it, separations. Got milkiness right in the middle of it right there because of the crack. It's only got a little teeny crack, but that hazy, milky area got between the layers of glass, and that uh, means this windshield's no bueno. So I got to get another windshield for it, which is a pretty big expense. So I'm going to have to save up for that. So, moving on. In our last video, we fixed the trunk pan. We have a trunk pan in there. I'm probably going to paint this spatter paint when I can find it. But in the meantime, it's worked. And I also have a seal that goes all the way around. I put a seal in it goes all the way around to keep most of the water out. And if there's any water that gets in here, it's probably from the leak right above there, the glass. And that'll be addressed later. Um, rusted metal needs to be repaired. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to go with this. Uh, it's uh, something that can be fixed while, while it's on the road. But in the meantime, this uh, has been fixed. So we're going to take a walk in the, or a look at the underside next. Okay, as you can see, we got a brand new gas tank, new brake lines. And I don't think you can see it up there, but behind that gas tank is a new hard fuel line. So we got that. And... Let me move a little bit up. Oh, let me get my finger out of the shot. Let me move a little bit closer here. Okay, last thing I'm working on right here is a rudimentary exhaust. As you see that pipe over there on the right side goes out just before the tire. And I'm just working on this side here. I gotta make a cut, cut this down and put this piece here up there to do the same. So it goes out right before the tire. This is a temporary exhaust, uh, semi-temporary I should say. Basically, I'm going to run this until I can afford uh, to uh, put the take this to a shop and have them do a real good exhaust. The problem with this is it's an X-frame car, and the exhaust is under the frame, and that doesn't give you a lot of clearance. The exhaust should be run looped under that area there and run parallel to the outside of the frame. That's the way the factory did the exhaust. So the exhaust and the muffler was about the same level as the frame itself. And that's probably what needs to be done here. Um, but in the meantime, hopefully, um, 
this won't be too low and I can drive it and take it easy with it and, until I get some proper exhaust. So anyway, that's what's, uh, that's what we're doing today. We're going to fix this exhaust up and that's pretty much it for now. Um, we got to save up for that windshield. Uh, that's going to be very costly. So that's the, pretty much the last uh, little bit until we get this thing taken to uh, inspection in the state of Delaware. I can, tra I can trade in my Vermont tags for Delaware tags. But we'll see how that goes. So in the meantime, hang on a second. Okay. I want to finish this video. and I want to give a shout out to a lot of people that give me inspiration to do this. Number one is the quiet engine. I got a call out, uh, my man with the Edsel uh, overseas doing the quiet engine. Um, he's working on stuff that's really hard, hard to come by parts and everything over there. And he's persevering and he's got a lot of patience. So um, go check his channel out called the quiet engine. He's working on an Edsel. Um, also, uh, a little closer to me is uh, Philadelphia No-Kill Car Shelter. Check out their channel. They, they, they do some crazy, uh, cool builds. A uh, great bunch of people over there, it seems. No-Kill Car Shelter. They just reached 1,000 subscribers. I'm really, uh, really pulling for them, happy for them. Um, I'm trying to think of the name. I know Sa uh, uh, Sage is, one of the, is the camera girl, and I'm thinking... Dennis, Danny, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but he's a real cool guy. Um, uh, you just check out the channel. Also, uh, the bigger guys, Pole Barn Garage. Uh, you got to know Dalton from Missouri, Pole Barn Garage. That guy builds cars uh, at an amazing speed. I don't know. He's got a lot of skill. He's a real good dad. He's got his son in there. His, uh I don't know how old his son is. He's like 12 or 13, something like that. JD, he's got him in there doing stuff. So props, hats off to Pole Barn Garage. And, of course, uh, you got Vice Grip Garage. He's the king. You know, Vice Grip Garage is, is, is I think, uh, we all started by watching Vice Grip Garage. Derek is a master and all like that. Not to mention uh, Junkyard Diggs. Uh, Junkyard Diggs, I started watching him, too. He's awesome. They do some crazy stuff over there. Um, I'm probably forgetting a bunch of them, but anyway, go go check all those channels out. Just wanted to give a shout out to all those guys because they, uh, all of them, helped me keep inspired by keeping doing this. This took me two years to get this far, and some of these guys do this stuff in about a week, and I don't know how they do it, but anyway, they do it. So, thanks for the inspiration. Thanks for helping out, guys. Thanks for all the entertainment. Take care. Keep on working on your projects. And adios.